Mercedes 3.0, CRD diesel, OM642, Sprinter injectors. How to remove them things when they're super stuck or they come right out. Wait, I'll show you. More than likely, Jeeps, Chryslers, anything with a Mercedes diesel, I'm pretty sure the injectors are the same. These injectors completely stuck and they won't move at all. Clearly, it's making me go insane. Cowboys bots definitely don't drive me nuts. Mercedes Benz full injectors sure do. And it sure feels like I got nuts in my butt this week. And I frown upon them types of things. I don't judge, though. So you want to be a YouTube creator, auto technician, fabricator, inventor? Tell you a little bit about my freaking week. Sprinter comes here. Yeah, they come from far and wide. I've had one from New Mexico, Washington, Philadelphia, Cape Cod, California, even Texas. That was just freaking 2022. I've been doing these things for about six years now. Literally makes me laugh. Oh man, I'd bring it to you, but I'm not close enough. They come from everywhere. I work on them and I'm pretty good at it sometimes. But the challenges on this one, brand new to Clayboy. So this one's freaking local. Needs rear diff. Needs that three freaking times. The door don't open. It took me four days to get it open without destroying anything and making it to where it worked. Needless to say, we started this project in November, but I had to go to SEMA. The end I put in it was a higher gear ratio. I did not know that you could not put a different gear ratio in it or reprogram the ECM to accept a different gear ratio. So don't ever do that. I'm telling you, nobody programs these ECMs that I'm aware of. The different gear ratio will throw the transmission into limp mode all the time. Moving on. So the guy had to bring it back in early January. Now we're at like the 25th of January and it's been here the whole freaking time. Then I had the great idea of saying, your injector seals are bad. I took them out like three or four times. I've never had a problem. Until this freaking time. So I had some injectors that wouldn't come out. Normally removing these injectors is pretty simple. You just take a screwdriver, you move it back and forth once you remove the bolt that holds it down and you can pull them right out. I thought it was fun before but I had no idea. Putting this video up, you don't have to watch the 45 minute, how many hours of footage I took to be successful at this. And there was so many times I was gonna freaking quit. Call this guy and tell him, you have to take your shit somewhere else, cause this ain't happening. So, I need a specialty injector tool. Buy this. Most of this was fairly worthless in my situation. This kit does not contain anything for how to remove the Mercedes diesel OM642 3.0 CRD diesel injectors. There's a couple little teeny things that you could use in this for the Mercedes Sprinter, but my kit does. However, I did use this kit for this, which I made a special adapter so it could screw onto the injector. And I can attach it to the slide hammer portion. Just screw this down, just finger tight, and that's why it's gnarled at the ends right there. Cut that bottom out, and we're gonna give this a go. And your injector will come right out just like that. Are you stupid or something? No, it freaking don't all the time. There's two problems. One, that wouldn't work the injectors that I could actually fit the slide hammer onto. Two, two locations on this engine, you're not putting a slide hammer on. That was the problem. Normally to get these out, all you need is a freaking screwdriver. So we can grab it with some pliers and Three of them came out that way, but not the other three. So then I go down and I buy a couple of these things that lets me invent this little clayway special sauce that I'll tell you about when you buy these kits. And they're done, of course. When they don't look like they're made by a five-year-old, I sprayed that all down there. That helped a little for my first tool. Then started thinking, maybe it's time. Crafty clay, crazy creations. Fuck with it till we figure it out and fix it. So I made this contraption, which seemed like a good idea and that it would possibly work very well. The theory was sound. That freaking thing wasn't strong enough. It bent it, it pulled the bolts through. I did, however, get one out with this thing. So then I went back to the drawing board, working with what I had. I grabbed this, I welded some nuts onto it and put it underneath there. This time I slid a little bit of metal underneath it so it'd 
push more pressure. It didn't seem to be working because the bolts would fall off the little ledges there. So after messing with that thing for a while, I ended up breaking the bolts, of course, because I used stinking grade five. Then I created what I affectionately refer to as dope. Because when you use this, the dopamine should start dropping. But it didn't. Not for a while. Problem is, you're working with what you have. That's one of my mottos down here. Work with what you got. But what you got ain't gonna work. So then I made another one of these out of one of these. Look at what happened to that solid steel. It literally bent it. Back to the freaking drawing board for like the third or fourth time. This would have probably worked a whole lot better if I drilled the hole square. But I'm Carpentry Challenge Clay, by the way, if you didn't know already. But eventually stripped this out. Ay, ay, ay. Then I go over and see my buddy Tracy. I'm like, dude. I need something made out of steel that has this thread pitch on one end and the particular thread pitch on the injectors on the other end. And I'm like, this has got to work. Freaking still working with what I had. I was using small ass bolts. Then of course them damn things snap off. After messing around with freaking bolts and spending 70 freaking dollars on these bolts. So then I go to make a third bracket, and this time I'm going to put bigger bolts and tap out the inside of the bar. So the bolts would stay in there. But look it, I tapped it on square. Are you crazy? Oh, I'm just plain stupid. Well, that seemed to work a lot better, but now my brackets are bending because they're too short and too small, so I need to make more of them and actually measure them out so that they're proper length. I'm also well known as consistently clay, consistently incompetent, superseding my ingeniousness often. I went back and made about nine more of these crappy looking things that I had to cut out by hand because I couldn't run the plasma table. That got it up quite a bit. Definitely not enough. That's what she said. To get it out of the way. Oh, two down, one to go. Of course, it was the worst one. Located under the brake booster here, there's not as much room to move. But I had thought about this prior to even making it. That's why it's so short, because I primarily was focused with this injector and this injector here not being able to use the slide hammer. I was in for a surprise. And worked really good except I ran out of space. I would move the bar up. I could take it back off and add more dope. I knew I'd need a lot of dope. That's why I made nine of them. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Okay. Eventually I ran out of space to where I couldn't work underneath there no more. I could no longer get on the bolts to turn them. And they were freaking bottomed out. Thought maybe if I move this, this would allow me to have it inside there instead of like this. It didn't work because the space was not feasible to create more plates or make a totally new bracket. There was far too many brackets and posts in the way to be able to do this. It just wouldn't work. Even with as many pieces of dope as I want. Wondering if any crackheads have ever said that. Moving on. Couldn't get the job done. I've never been able to function on drugs, but I have heard people go to work, to do more coke, work harder, be able to do more coke. I have heard that it's a repetitive cycle though. Work harder to do more coke, to work harder to do more coke, to do more coke, to work harder never tried it so i don't know but that was the ingenious part of this was this was designed so it'd move up in increments which was a great design idea no ultimately it wasn't super successful it still got the injector up a good two or three inches at least it felt that way anyways so then i had the bright idea of tapping this out so i could insert my original bolt and it would still stick up about this high and then I could put this underneath there and screw my bolt down and it would travel that upward. That seemed like a good theory, but it didn't work. So then I thought, maybe if I had a way to turn it, maybe that would work. Take my clevis that holds it down, I weld a nut on the, the top of it and try to use a ratchet to turn it. I wasn't aware this was made of cast and it snapped off. So then I take my original bent bracket I notched it out correctly for the amount of space on the injector, and I couldn't get a freaking enough leverage to pop the damn thing out. Back to the drawing board like the seventh freaking time. Put something on here to raise this thing up. That thing's gonna pop out. I took my socket, I cut it in half, put it on there. Let's see what happens. Then I take a hammer and tap it down like a little sissy bitch. Maybe if I do a couple of sissy bitch taps on this, maybe it'll pop up. 
At this point, I'm thinking, what's gonna happen if you can't do this, Clay? You're gonna send it to someone else and they're gonna have to do it? I'm not letting anybody in my prison purse, even if that's possible. That means they're gonna do it. And if they can do it, you can do it too. So I go over to the chest of drawers and grabbeth my air hammer. So we're gonna take this and hit this with the air hammer. Now we're gonna go to town. Smash, smash, smash. Yeah. First, I wanna square it up a little bit. So I push it over. Then I want it nice and tight underneath there. So I hammer it down a bit. Smash, smash, smash. Then I pick this piece up and I can move it over to the other side of this to change my leverage. Now you'll be able to see how much more action we have able to get and movement on the teeter-totter. Once again, we take her to Pound Town. Smash, smash, smash. Yeah. Then hell yeah, up to the yeah. Hell yeah, look at that shit. Four fucking days. Dumb bitches. Look at that crap. Ridiculous. Look at up how much oil was caked into that center hole there. Wow, I didn't even destroy it. I did put, crack the plastic a little bit on there. That's the whole point. These injectors are about $500 crazy you want one of these kits adult version not the child's version that i made today i'm gonna have it made by skilled tradesmen partially myself but other people and when i send stuff out to folks i send out good shit. little lesson on engineering first you make whatever it is you think you're making in your brain you just make it work you don't make it pretty then you can make it pretty later just like me. My name's Clay with the Clay Way here in Grand Rapids, Muskegon, Michigan. You can look me up on Facebook under Clay's AC and Auto Repair, or you can send me an email to the new Clayway at Gmail. You can also ask me questions for absolutely free. I can't help you with baby mama drama, but I will help you with your whip if I can. Remember, don't be the next to them, be the absolute first to you. No matter what you think, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, giving me them sweet old thumbs up. You want to help the channel out? And donate down below. Super chat, uh, all them other crap apps, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And if you don't have a lot of dough like me, turn the volume down at nighttime, put on my Sprinter playlist, let them suckers play from front to back, to listen to this mouth run. God bless, folks. Have the greatest of days.